All right, this is Lightning Talks part two of day two of PulpCon 2024. And the first discussion up that I'm aware of is a discussion on signing services. I will admit that I personally was not following them. So those of you who were involved, go for it. Ready to go. Hey, Grant, can I can I co-opt this conversation for a second and, and just talk about um, authentication stuff? Because I think that that will provide context for signing service discussions. Absolutely, Stephen. It's all yours. I'm just going to leave the recording open and we'll take whatever we get. How about that? Okay. Um, so I ask everyone to bear with me. I did not wake up this morning expecting to present anything, so I don't have anything prepared. But I want to just um, talk for a minute about my current uh, problems in my life and in ways that folk could potentially make that better. Um, Microsoft right now is going through a, a big security focused improvement cycle and one of the things that they are doing as part of this uh this focused work effort is getting rid of stored credentials everywhere so all stored passwords all pen certificates all of those are going away and being being replaced with dyna dynamic authentication options either calling out to azure entra id or at the very worst case, having a certificate off that is doing um, uh, issuer and and um, SNI um, service service subject name and issuer authentication that, that has integration with their certificate management system, so that they can auto rotate the certificates at the push of a button, and everything just continues to work. But the idea is that there should be no stored credentials anywhere that it's possible to have leaked that could cause them ongoing headaches, right? Because security leaks do happen and sometimes uh, passwords get stolen or whatever. And, and they don't want there to be anything anywhere internal to Azure that presents a, an ongoing problem in the case of a security incident. They want to be able to push a giant red centralized button that says rotate every credential that exists and have all of the backend services just continue to work. Um, and so this, so this brings me to poll. Um, Pulp itself is, is not, I don't think it's doing anything wrong, but what I would love to see from Pulp is for everywhere that you guys authenticate to anything to have, provide a basic off, like you're using username and password a, a lot of different places. Like off the top of my head, there's the uh, authenticating to the database, there's authenticating to the API, uh, authenticating to the Redis cache, I think all three of those places assume username and password authentication. And there's probably more that I'm not thinking of at the moment. My, my plea and the basis for, um, I mean, I might get around to filing some upstream pull requests or something if I uh, get the chance to. But I would love to see anywhere that the authentication is being done, if it was a pluggable solution. So like, at the API, for example, maybe you provide basic auth, the username and password auth, as a default implementation that you ship, but make it pluggable in a module so that I can write my own auth module and then just change the settings of configurations in the settings file to say, use the Azure Entra ID auth module instead of the basic auth module. Um, kind of like similar to how Django Storage does for the storage backends, right? You, you, you Pulp cares about all Pulp knows is that it calls out to Django Storages to do the storage stuff. And then us in our settings file says, we say use Azure Storage or use Amazon S3 or whatever. Uh, and it all just works in the back end. I would love to see similar things for all authentication. It's getting hard to hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay, this is better. How much do I need to restate? No, no, just, it, we heard you. Keep going. Yeah, you go ahead, Stephen. Just keep going. You just got way softer, but you're back now. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm basically done anyway. But that's um, that's what I would love to have as an improvement for Pulp is for all authentication to be modularized into um, something that can be overridden in a settings by with a settings option. So for the API authentication, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I believe you can already do that. Um, 
for the API, not anything else, though. Mm -hmm. So, I this is on my to do list to get to. So I haven't actually changed it yet. So you might be right. My initial five minute investigation tells me that you have the authentication like that is pulled out into a separate module, but there's no setting that I can update to switch to a different. I think it's the middleware list that you update. Yep. Okay, so it's possible that's already resolved then. Um, for the API it, only. It's only for the API though. So well, the, and and I'll I'll also add that uh, default Django kind of gets you gives you the ability to override the database auth because you can create your own uh, database wrapper and set that as the engine in the in the g just generic uh, Django settings, which we are already doing that today our database auth is already calling out to enter id um, and that works fine so it, it may just be it may just be um the redis cache and if there's anywhere else that you can think of that uses uh hard-coded password auth um but well yeah for example remotes you know sometimes you yep. want to sync content from a source that requires you to authenticate so Right now, we store those credentials in the database. Mm -hmm. Matthias? Uh, yeah, from the top of my head, we are mixing three things together here. Yep, that's right. Um, <laughs> which is fine, which is fine, but let's keep them, let's make it explicit. Go ahead, Matthias. Yeah, uh, one of them obviously being how can I authenticate to Paul? Yep. Um, that is configurable by. Uh, adding all the authentication classes to the, I think, DRF section of the config. Sometimes they link. need some, some, some of them need an extra middleware. That's right, but I think it's uh, something like DRF default authentication classes. Um, the second one we talked about is the is pulp as an application talking to its spec and services, mm -hmm. and. Yes, that is kind of fragmented. And that's probably your main pain here. Uh, for the access to the database, we use uh, the stock Django config thing. And whatever you can put there is should be usable by Pulp. Redis may be an actual issue. Mm -hmm. And for the storages, uh, we do have the access to the default storage in the config settings or in the settings. And for all the domains, we already put credentials in the database again, yep. which is something we had in the previous talk. And the third bucket that you just brought up, Dennis, is um, credentials a user hands to the API in order to talk to yet a different service, like a remote upstream. Mm -hmm. Or the domain configuration. That's another one. Or the domain configuration because the user provides the storage bucket. Right. Thank you. Yep. Or and a signing service. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> we started this whole conversation. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, for the uh, um, remotes and storage buckets and maybe signing services, uh, I think we kind of need some implementation for a vault so that users can safely store their whatever credentials somewhere and Pulp is allowed to use them or delegate to them even better. Yes. And um, yes. Yeah, I think that's my summary here. So I would recommend against you implementing your own vault. I, I bring up Django storages just as an example of a uh, a library you're already doing that I think is doing the, the right thing here, where it's just the settings you can change, the settings option you can change to switch backends, and it's, it's mostly invisible to the rest of the application. Um, yeah, I think that that, is, that that type of implementation is what would be ideal for for all authentication. And, and if it's already in place for the API, then then great, I just have to start using it. Uh, but yeah, for Redis or the other places, as long as you make it so that it's easy to define your own auth module and then switch to it with the setting, that is 
basically all I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. So Steven, I'm, and I'm just designing off the top of my head here. Hang on, Brian, let me get this thought out and then I'll hand it off to you. If Pulp were to come with, I'm just looking at our settings here, would, were to come with, instead of, for example, Kafka username and password and Redis username and password, it would come with the setting, which would be Redis auth module and Kafka auth module. And the way Pulp would come out of the box is that auth module, the, you know, the one that you use is just basic auth and it has the username and password and we do whatever we're going to do with it. When you get a hold of it, you would use a different auth module that would do whatever you wanted in order to, to store that username or, you know, do whatever kind of authentication was necessary. Is that kind of what you have in your head? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, we may be able to get some benefit from the use of Dynaconf. Um, I kind of feel like Dynaconf is positioning itself as the get my settings from anywhere. And Bruno yesterday in his lightning talk mentioned Dynaconf 4's, maybe I heard right, vault integration. So I don't know. You know, uh, it's an idea. It's not really that like, hey, this is a solved problem, let's just use it. I, I really don't yeah. think it's that. No, it's definitely not. Um, but I mean, the observation, we already use Dynacomp heavily. I'm pretty sure that's where they're going. So maybe there's a there there. I think, Stephen, what you're hearing, or what I'm hearing anyway, um, is uh, there's a lot of support for for the need that you're you're exposing here. Um, as I said in the chat, software pipeline security is a huge topic because, as you as you have said, there's been a lot of uh, problems around there recently. Um, and I really like the recognition of talking to pulp, pulp talking to itself in some sense, and then pulp talking to the far away things. Those are three different areas. They all need to be resolved, um, and we need to figure out how to how to have a better story for this. Um, Maybe we'll have a talk next year at PulpCon 2025 in how much progress we've made on the subject. Or maybe you could give it. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we should have a, a working solution internally by then. So maybe, maybe I could talk about something like that. We'll That'd speak. be great. That'd be great. Submit it upstream. It'd be even better. Then you wouldn't have to maintain it, right? Yeah. Kieran, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say maybe take this conversation one more time to the signing service example because it is an yep. interesting weird special case mm -hmm. <laughs> um and so like with the signing service i guess pulp has kind of decided to avoid the issue like mm -hmm. we don't want to deal with authentication so we're just gonna provide an interface where we call a script that you need to provide and mm -hmm. i don't care what this script does so long as it returns the signed file i expect mm -hmm. um and of course that kind of well i mean it makes it very in some sense very difficult to like, if you want to put security in there, right? You don't want, you. I mean, you're accessing a secret key in some way, shape or form somewhere, maybe on a different system, but like, I mean, the only way to really protect your secret key is somebody needs to provide a secret at some point in this mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. um and and pulp is kind of saying well i'm just going to call this binary and expect the result i want and it's your problem where you're going to inject <laughs> security into this mm -hmm. um so yeah that's like and so steven i think you wrote in the chat that the way you solved this was that script basically calls something else which needs to provide the the functionality and there's a waiting loop there i guess and so my question is is that a good solution or what are your thoughts on that so i 
I, I wouldn't go so far as to saying it's a good solution, but I don't have any great ideas on what pulp could do better because all of our signing service stuff is going to be incredibly specific to internal Microsoft services and, and, and authentication policies, right? There's, there's nothing generic that anyone else outside of the company uh, would care about, basically. And which I think is why Pulp designed the signing service this way is so that you can ju you just have a script that does whatever it needs to do, quote unquote. Um, and I think that if you wanted to, to have something that was more integrated into the Pulp code, it would be hard to do it in, in a generic enough way to be useful to people in, in different companies. Exactly. Brian? Uh, yeah, that that is definitely the case. Um, and I, wanna, I also want to point out that, or, or add one more kind of reason to motivate the current design. Not to say it can't get better, and I'll tell you one way it can again. But um, uh, when most people think about that script, they're like, oh, the thing it's calling is, is is GPG and the pulp server is doing the signing. And that's um, kind of what most people who don't do a lot of signing, I would say, and, and our service doesn't do a lot of signing, um, kind of would think. But um, if you go to like kind of bigger enterprises, what you'll find is that they have um, dedicated servers that just do signing and they actually have um, HSM a hardware security module um, hardware that provides signing. And we used to we used to have a user who we worked with a lot. I think his name was Michael. I forget. He used to work at SAS. Yep. Um, and he taught me a lot about this, actually. And so uh, I'm not saying SAS does or does not do this. Um, what I'm saying is that uh, there are a lot of systems out there where this special box performs all the signing and you have to communicate with it over the network. And in fact, it's physically tamper proof. Like if you try to open it, it deletes everything. Um, and so in a lot of ways, um, we wanted to enable those kinds of things. And so like, even if we um, included as many batteries to get people going easier, you know, we still wanted to make sure to leave that open for those folks and that's kind of where like the script was like the middle ground point so i guess what i'm trying to say is in the if you laid out all the use case on a table and you sorted them by small and easy and batteries included at the other end is like enterprise and we'll just say enterprise um our users are like all over the place one thing that i think pulp could do better is make the batteries included experience better um yeah that's kind of a little bit of unpacking of like how pulp meets the world of signing security today very cool thanks for that kieran uh mike kieran i think sorry um, I, I, I agree with everything you've said, Brian. Um, so like my, or the issue is like the middle ground. So, so like the easy way or the way most small installations are going to set up the signing service in practice is what you said, right? I have an unprotected private key lying on my pulp server and the signing script just calls GPG on it. And that's terrible in some sense. So like, if I don't have that best practice thing of I have a big hardware protected server that you authenticate with that server somehow and you give it the thing you want signed and it returns the signature to you or the signed thing, uh, then you kind of very easily collapse into that worst case scenario of like what I just said initially. So like, 
I'm wondering if there's a case to have some kind of, I don't know, at least have an ability to say if I if I call to the pulp API, I want to do a new publication, which is going to need signing. Uh, I can pass in my secret right then. And if it's just the password for the signing uh, for for the for my secret key that's lying on my pulp instance. And it won't be saved anywhere. It'll just be passed through to my signing script, and then my signing script can can use it. But that way, I can actually like at least password protect my secret key and not just have it completely open on the pulp server. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like it seems like there there needs to be a easier way to to have a like small scale okayish security. If you're not going to have the full best practice thing, yeah, I'm going to stop talking. Grant, you raised your sure. Hands. I mean, I'm just I'm just going to throw out there that that um, lots of people have given a lot of thought to this problem. There's absolutely going to be best practices out there, and that's where we should start. Um, but just off the top of my head, as somebody that did security several lifetimes ago. Um, you know, I'll pass the password in on my API call and the security guy in me says, that just means now your attacker is going to go after the communication channel between you, whoever you are, and the API server that's opening your security uh, uh, attack surface more than if it were just inside of Pulp. There isn't a great answer here, but there's a lot of answers already out there. So brainstorming is great, but the first thing we really should be looking to do is, is there some best practice we could just take? Here's the, what the security industry says. Hey, if you want to do this, as you say, Kieran, the not completely hardware controlled, but better than what we're doing. Yeah, here's a thing. Just do this. That would be the my first thought is... Um, to implement something that people that a lot of people that live in security have thought about as opposed to us, not just us, the pulp team, but us, this community uh, makes up out of the off the top of our head because we're just going to miss things. OK, Brian, that's my pitch. Go ahead. Uh, I think you're on mute, Brian. Whoops. Um, so continuing <laughs> the example from earlier and connecting connecting it to what you're saying, Kieran. So um, one of the things to keep in mind is that, um, so, so you're talking about kind of like, I think you're talking about like helping to make users who don't have fancy HSMs have a better experience. I'm all for that. That, that sounds great. Um, one thing, so I want to just go back or connect your idea to those users who do have HSMs. Um, cause what you're saying is, is let's pass in the credentials over the API. And I want to tell you why that's, I think, a good idea. Um, so these HSMs only communicate over the network. And they're only going to sign stuff if they can trust the source from which they requested it, right? Like the worst case for signing, even if you have all the fancy fancy stuff, is, um, well, I was able to kind of forge a network request to the signing service. And now it's signing things for me. Um, and so, so there's definitely a um, identity verification, like with certificates and signing um, of the request um, as it makes it makes its way over the network to the HSM. And so this is kind of like if you look at the architecture that we have for signing with Pulp, it's like okay, great. So you can have the script, but really what we're saying is the HSM is trusting Pulp, like this Pulp server. And that's probably not a great situation um, because now any now like your attack vector is the entire pulp application and this entire pulp um, the installation, this pulp server. So like what would be much stronger, I think, is what you're saying as an idea um, is to pass in the credentials uh, that can create the signing request over the API. So like, you're not really trusting, you're not trusting pulp. This is kind of a zero trust idea. You're not trusting pulp. The HSM doesn't trust pulp. The HSM, which is what it does now. And so the opportunity here, which I like, is the HSM trusts uh, the users 
And that's, I think that's just a better situation. It's better, for, I think, for the pulp application, frankly, to to not be that thing that's trusted. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, that's a good point, Matthias. Um, what I'm hearing is general agreement that that we would it would be great. We would like to have a better experience for the bulk of our users because the bulk of our users aren't going to be full bore, you know, hundred thousand dollar hardware uh, signing system kind of users. Um, but that we want to make sure we do this right. And um, my personal thing, what I'm hearing and I agree with is the less pulp has to be the trusted holder of things, the better off everybody is, most especially including pulp. Um, if we can get out of that business, it's good for everybody. Um, this is great discussion. Anything else? And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just pointing out that we have like three minutes left in our allotted time, and I want to be respectful of people's time, especially folk that are in the EU. They should be going to get dinner soon. Do we have any last thoughts on this conversation? I have a short lightning talk after this. Well, uh, given our schedule, Brian, can we hold that for tomorrow? We can Is definitely hold okay? it till tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Because I want to let you go get get dinner, and then uh, we'll we'll uh, have that at the end of the presentation tomorrow. All right. Anything else, folks? Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to stop the recording here for this one lightning talk. This has been great. I